Hi, hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla and I like to talk about books. So today we're going to talk about the book Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I was hoping to get this kind of review up a little bit more quickly after I read it, but I didn't read it as quickly as I thought. I definitely didn't get around to this as quickly as I thought. And I also look super schleppy today, but that's what it is. That's okay. So let's just get into a little bit of a description about the book and then I'll go right into my thoughts, my review. I'm actually going to keep this pretty spoiler free for a couple of reasons. One being that the primary reason being that it's just such a new book that I feel like a lot of people still haven't read it are probably looking to see whether or not they should. I'm not interested in spoiling it for you. Sea of Tranquility is a sci-fi novel that follows time, time travel relating to three separate timelines both on earth and on a colony on the moon. Um, without giving too much away it deals with time travel as well as pandemics and basically like the intersection of all of these elements. The three distinct timelines also deal with their own characters, Edwin St. Andrew arriving in the Canadian wilderness in 1812, Olive Llewellyn who is on a book tour on earth around the year 2100 I think, and Gaspry Jack Roberts who is in the present timeline but that is actually the present kind of timeline I guess but that's actually the future if that makes sense but I feel like that's depicted as like kind of the main timeline maybe. I don't know if I'm assessing that right, but I felt like it was kind of the main timeline. Anyway, I like I said, I'm not going to do an in-depth summary since this is such a new, re new release and kind of a bizarre plot, so I can't imagine trying to summarize it without just spoiling. So let's get right into some of my thoughts. My first thought really when I was reading this is that, to be honest, this book starts off pretty slow. Um, I honestly was not that interested at first, but I definitely just kind of stuck with it because I was like, well, you know, like it'll probably pick up. Um, but yeah, I probably wasn't that interested until about a third of the way through it. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. I just read Station Eleven before this, and this is a pretty big contrast because in my opinion, Station Eleven is immediately in the action and is pretty interesting right from the get-go, so this was definitely a change of pace just to kind of keep you informed on that. So once it does pick up though, maybe just because it was slow in the beginning, it almost feels like kind of rushed. I don't know if that was just me, but it was a little bit odd. The pacing was just a little bit off for me personally. Something that I do want to say is that it starts off in the 1912 timeline section and life was obviously like a lot slower then so I don't know maybe that was just being captured stylistically within the pace that like it was just a slower kind of life I don't know I'll maybe kind of give the benefit of the doubt for that but yeah definitely slow to start something that I did find really fun about this book though and especially as it gets into the Olive Llewellyn like timeline and story is that um, it's very meta it's kind of like a meta book I feel like there's commentary on Emily St. John Mandel herself and like her own experience as an author through the character of Olive yeah Olive is just definitely like kind of an incarnation I think of Emily St. John Mandel, Mandel herself so I liked that it was kind of meta had a little bit of commentary something that kind of added to that was that while Olive was on her book tour about a book a pandemic book a pandemic does break out and then of course this kind of relates back to Emily St. John Mandel's book about a pandemic getting really big in a pandemic speaking of the pandemic there is of course mention of COVID though it's separate from the other pandemic in the book but it is definitely just mentioned and sometimes it does feel a little bit maybe shoehorned in but it also kind of feels like you couldn't leave it out so no real thoughts on that particularly um generally yeah this book had kind of on the surface what you would think would be a lot going on moon colonies, pandemics, time and space travel. Yet I will say that it keeps it somewhat focused. It doesn't feel too all over the place. 
because it just doesn't bother really explaining these elements, but more how they propel human interactions forward and how the emotional responses to them. So really these are just tools to move just really human and emotional stories forward. Not unlike Station Eleven, which I've also read by her. Now I have not read her other books. I don't know if this is like a hallmark of hers, but it feels like it could be. So yeah, just something to keep in mind, kind of similar in that sense. I like that the focus is on the human aspects of these things, but I will say, I don't know if if it was at the expense of this or whatever, but the timeline was really pretty messy to follow. There was too much for a book of this length. I'll just be honest. There was too much for a book of this length and it felt really, really cramped. There is a large introduction of characters at one point and are, they're just really difficult to properly follow. I think I'm a little bit more disappointed than I probably otherwise would be simply because I read this just after reading Station Eleven, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna be honest, I think in my mind I was just naturally comparing it so much to that experience and Station Eleven was just immediately one of my favorite books of the year. But you know, th so this wasn't a bad book, it wasn't a terrible read, but I do think that a lot of what I was doing was comparing it to Station Eleven just because I read them in such close proximity. And I mean, Station Eleven felt a little bit like lightning in a bottle. So I'm, I just feel like it would be hard to recapture something of that caliber, but that's just my opinion. This book did have enjoyable parts though. Just because I didn't love it as a whole, I do think it had enjoyable parts. I really liked everything with Olive, um, and I liked how the sci-fi elements felt really commonplace, really matter-of-fact. I mean, also, I just, just think that Emily St. John Mandel has beautiful writing. I think her writing can be truly, truly, like, poetic at times, and yeah, just really beautifully written. So, I mean, I guess to kind of sum up my thoughts is that the book may have been honestly rushed out a little bit to sort of capitalize on the pandemic and so many people picking up Station Eleven, kind of that renaissance or re-emergence of Station Eleven and all of the people reading it. I think that maybe this book was rushed out to sort of capitalize on that hype combined with the pandemic and as a result it felt a little bit like it wasn't finished. It needed a little bit more time, but I get it because I think that it wouldn't have this level of relevance in another year or two, so it's hard to kind of balance that and walk that line, but it did. It needed more time. Honestly, she needed more time to really polish the story, particularly the timelines and the characters a little bit more, but really, yeah, those timelines, the, yeah, the bread is just a little bit doughy in the center and it needed more time. I could do a Paul Hollywood impression at this moment. It's raw. It's completely raw. Yeah, this just needed to have a little bit more time, I think, to sit and yeah, that's all. That's all I think of it. It wasn't like bad, but it was not fantastic. It definitely was not to the caliber of Station Eleven in my opinion. Is it worth reading? Sure. And I think especially if you like her as an author, it has some really great writing and some nice parts. But frankly, I'm not gonna go around like recommending this to a lot of people or anything like that. It just didn't have quite the wow factor, but it's fine. I think if you're already interested in reading it, then like, sure, go ahead and read it. And I'd be curious to know like what other people think. But if you're not interested in reading it, like I'm not gonna tell you to go up and grab it, go pick it up because I don't know, it wasn't life changing for me, but it was fine. She has beautiful writing, um, but seems like you just need a little bit more time. Uh, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on this. Let me know below in the comments if you've read it yet, if you're interested in reading it, what your thoughts kind of are, trying to keep it spoiler free here as much as possible. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And yeah, I will see you later. Bye.